I was telling Robin a story, Coach, when you were playing, when you were a player. You separated your shoulder. You went in the game anyway. And you, what you did, because you were a tight end, if you had to catch a ball, you would knock it down with your good hand and kind of push it into your chest and carry the ball, right? Well, it, it was similar to that. I mean, I, I did play where you had one arm, one shoulder strapped down, but you played. I mean, you have a harness on it where it couldn't move a certain way. It was harder to catch a football because only one arm went up in the air. Right. But you could do it. You did it. Yeah. But a lot so of guys... So what about these guys who sit out when well, they have an injury? <clears throat> the game's different. I mean, it's all about money. Right. I mean, they're going to jeopardize their career to play one game uh, and, and their earning power. Uh, and plus, you know, it, it, it's just a hard thing for them to do, really. And I don't, I'm not sure I blame them. I mean, uh, I, can, I can get my shoulders up, but it hurts. <laughs> you, were, you were voted, I guess, like the number one tight end of all time and all that. It, it, you didn't get a lot of money to play, did you? I mean, you were kind of... Uh, my first contract, and no, 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 this is a long time ago. No, right. We've we got to put things in perspective. 1961. Right. I signed a twelve thousand dollar contract with a six thousand dollar signing bonus. That's eighteen thousand. But in sixty one, my dad worked in a in a steel mill, so you know. But you know, what was the, relative? But what was the game plan in life for you? In other words, when you're making twelve thousand dollars, yeah, okay, that's a lot more money than your dad was making. But still, didn't you worry that you'd get out of football? Who knew you were going to be the great coach? Who knew what was going to be? Uh, what was the game plan? It could have gone horribly wrong, right? There was no game plan in my life at all when I played with the Bears. Just football. My, my game plan came into focus when I went to Dallas with the Cowboys. I played for the Cowboys for four years. We won a Super Bowl. I played for Coach Landry. I coached there for nine years as an assistant coach, and then I became the head coach of the Bears. So if I would have never went through that process in Dallas, I doubt that I would ever become head coach of the Bears. When you were a coach for the Bears, it, you know, I always meant to ask you, like, Jim McMahon wasn't a great quarterback in the sense of the all-time great so you don't need a great quarterback to win do you you just need a competent quarterback jim mcmahon was a winner and a leader right but if you're talking about physically he couldn't come close to marino right so wait so your point of view as a coach now is that you give me a guy who's a leader but he doesn't necessarily have to be physically the best quarterback that ever lived, who throw the farthest, this and that. You come up with a game plan. It's really a, a team sport. Let you, me ask you something, because I always wonder, what is the importance of the coach? You know, like these coaches now have become superstars of the game. Well, you, you know, you're right. The players play the game, you know, and I said, you know, uh, you know, Somebody once said that there's no coach worth a player, but I disagree with that. I think that you formulate the game plan. Everything in life is a game plan. What you do today, you, we all have a game plan. I go back in my life to people I've watched, Lombardi. Right. When he went to Green Bay, they stunk. Why did they change? Right. They changed because of him and what he made them understand. There's only one way to do things. That was his way. It was the right way. He was a leader and he inspired them. Right. Inspiration, right. He right. inspired them. You don't motivate. they got to motivate themselves. But also, tactically, you've got to be sort of a genius. You've got to sit there and go, hey, how am I going to get this ball downfield? Well, and, the old thing, KIS says, keep it simple, stupid, because it's not genius. It right. isn't. <laughs> it's beating the other guy. You know what he's doing. You know what you do best. But if you're ever going to give up doing what you do best to try to defeat the other guy, you're not going to defeat him. After an incredible career in Chicago that you had, you retire for three years from coaching, and then you come back and you go to New Orleans. Yep. Was that a mistake in retrospect? I mean, do you, do you, who the hell need You got a lot of aggravation yeah, in yeah, New Orleans, yeah. right? They gave you crap. Not really. Uh, I, I tell you what, you know, to say why I did it, I thought it was divine intervention because you know, you got to understand now. I, I've been part of two Super Bowls as an assistant coach and a head coach, and they, both of them were played in New Orleans. So right. I said, God's calling me to go to New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. You mean you thought you got a sign from God? Yeah, God but meant unfortunately. You to do that. Turns out God wasn't talking no, to you. No, he was. It was, a right. short, it was a short stop. Right. But, anyway, no. The but people, you hated the fans there? No, I didn't. No, I didn't never hate did no, the fans. They, they, listen, they're the greatest fans in the world. They're the most. most I mean, they've hung in there for 46 years. And what happened in that city last year with them winning the Super Bowl was the greatest thing in the world. It was a great I story. I mean, Katrina, the whole thing. I mean, I was there through all that stuff. It was crazy.